Hi there, this is Solid Children from Solid Children Films and welcome to part one of my Kurosawa Before Rashomon series. Now I haven't announced this series because my habit is I announce series and then never actually get around to doing them. Don't worry, the Aki Karismaki part one is coming. Um, but I've been wanting to do Kurosawa Before Rashomon for a while. Um, Kurosawa is probably my favourite director of all time and everybody and I haven't really done videos on him because everybody's pretty much familiar with his stuff after Rashomon but I thought it would be quite interesting to do the 10 films before Rashomon so that's 1943 to 1950 um, there is an 11th film that he co-directed but he was never happy with it Those Who Make Tomorrow I don't have it in my collection so I'm not going to include it and also I'm not going to include it because um, the governor Kurosawa said not to include it. Um, so it's 10 films even though he says probably the first six of those 10 still wasn't the complete Kurosawa vision. So we're going to start today with Sanshiro Sagata from 1943 his feature debut. Obviously he worked as a writer and assistant director for a lot of years. Now Sanshiro Sugata is not in the form that Kurosawa intended it. It was cut by about 1800 feet which on 35mm is roughly about 20 odd minutes. I could be wrong on that. Um, so it's only about an hour and 20. This was because of the post-war um, government kind of entertainment wartime policies. So there were certain things that were cut out of it. Um, my copy of the film is in the BFI early Kurosawa DVD set, which has six of his early films. Um, there are 11 minutes of deleted scenes from Sanshiro Sagata on this set, which are quite interesting and give a couple of little um, nuggets of character. So this isn't really the complete vision of Kurosawa for his first film. Um, it was written by Kurosawa for a novel by Tosino Tomita. Again apologies for any Japanese speaking viewers. I butcher the names. Um, it stars Tsushima Fujita as Sanshir Sanshiro. And Takeshi Shimura, who you may have heard of before, makes his first appearance in a Kurosawa film. He would go on to do 21 Kurosawa films, or thereabouts. 22, if you include those who make tomorrow, which we're not, because the governor says no. Um, I didn't actually realise this was remade in 1965 um, by Suchiro Uchikawa, and featured both Takeshi Shimura and Toshiro Mifun um, and it's two and a half hours long. I haven't seen that one. Um, you can let me know in the comments if you've seen it and the differences between the two films. But this one is about judo set in 1882 and it's kind of the beginning of judo from Jiu-Jitsu, it's probably not Jiu-Jitsu, but it's in the subtitles it's Jiu-Jitsu, even though there's no I in it. Um, a prefigure of Judo, I'm guessing, as opposed to Jiu-Jitsu, which is a completely different martial art. Um, again, I could be wrong, I'm not a martial arts expert. And it follows the title character, who years later could have been played by Toshiro Mifun, because he starts off, he's a wild man, who has no discipline, um, he wants to learn, but he falls in with this jiu-jitsu crew who want to teach 
um, this other master of judo a lesson and there's a wonderful opening fight scene on the side of a dock where they all ambush the master there's no music and he kind of takes them out one by one and Sanshiro um, Sugata is just standing at the back admiring this man as he dispatches these hoodlums essentially so he then wants to learn from this guy but of course he has no discipline he's wild um, but he wants to prove that you know he's ready and willing to die for him so he jumps into the pond the lotus pond at their facility um, and holds onto a stake um, in the pond overnight and into the morning um, before he has an epiphany um, the film in its truncated form is fairly simple as far as the story um, there's a villain Mr Hijacky you can tell he's a villain because he has a bowler hat and has a black moustache um, and he comes to the dojo essentially um, wanting a fight but he's refused um, which leads him to hating Sagata and the film ends up with him and Sagata having a duel at the end but in the meantime um, as the judo grows um, there's matches with Takeshi Shimura's um, group um, and Takeshi Shimura has a fight with Sanshiro Sagata before that um, and Hi, Hi Jackie, you know, wants to marry Shimura's daughter. Um, in a deleted scene, we find this out. And also, Shimura has promised him that he can take over from Shimura because Shimura's crew um, trains the police in martial arts. Um, but then Sugata unwittingly forms a friendship and a relationship with um, Takeshi Shimura's character's daughter and doesn't realise that who she is and then she says that her father is going to fight this guy called Sanshira Shigata um, which is of course him so he has conflicted feelings um, the fight scene with Shimura is just absolutely wonderful first of all he has a fight with the leader of essentially the thugs from the first scene um, and now that he's learned and he's become stronger and far better and um, he dispatches the guy um, and then he fights Shimura and it's just a beautiful scene it's silent it's almost as if they're dancing there's beautiful little touches between the two and there's a moment where Sugata kind of rubs his knee because he realises what he's wearing is really threadbare and falling apart. And he gives a little smile and Shimura gives a little smile back. It's just a wonderful moment. I mean, already, I mean, Shimura has over like 300 acting credits in his career. But Shimura was just not a showy actor. He was just so dependable, so full of class and dignity um, and honour you know without being flashy and he's just wonderful in this as well um, and Sugata feels bad um, for spoiler alert um, for beating him in this match um, but they become friends and he you know he obviously wants to have a relationship with his daughter um, but then Hijaki comes back to have his duel and again the duel at the end of the film is one already in Kurosawa's first film is just an amazing set piece the wind is absolutely deafening on the soundtrack um, it's just beautifully done in the moonlight it's just a stunning tour de force by Kurosawa in his first film um, as far as on the technical side, you can tell Kurosawa knows what he's doing, even though it is his first feature. His use of wipes 
both horizontal and vertical wipes. Um, you know, that fight scene at the start on the dock has just the tracking shots as he tracks between all these characters that are taking on the master one at a time and the camera just tracks backwards and forwards seeing their faces as they're about to um, jump into the fray. It uses dissolves. Um, there's a wonderful moment early on after that fight at the dock where Sagata throws away his sandals and then we just follow the adventures of the sandals and again it's just a use of the sandals as a way of passing time and so we realise Sagata's um, building his skill just by showing the sandals as they're blown about by the weather and stuff like that. Um, already his composition of the frame where characters are in the frame the use of space in the frame is already impressive. Um, the theme of nature and man's relationship to nature um, with the moon and the flower in the pond which kind of gives Sagata pause for thought. And then like I say the tour de force scene at the end with the howling wind, the grass um, you know, the shots in there that you'd just go, just pause that, print it and stick it in a wall in an art gallery. Um, so the nature with clouds, again obviously later in films, Kagamush and Ran, shots of clouds meant the kind of gods looking down on humans' pathetic behaviour. Um, so there's lots of things that Kurosawa would continue throughout his career, even in this truncated, bastardised form of his debut feature. Um, it is an assured little film. Like I said, this is a director who knows what he's doing with the camera. It's not a first time director who's a little bit unsure. Um, it would be good to see a fuller version. The prints on that DVD set aren't great. Um, hopefully Criterion will treat Kurosawa the way they've treated Bergman and Fellini and do a Blu-ray box set essentially upgrading the AK-25 DVD box set that they released um, years ago which I sadly don't have which is quite upsetting um, so it's a it's an interesting debut there's lots of things that you can see that will come and flourish technically Kurosawa knows what he's doing um, and obviously the introduction of Takeshi Shimura who would have perhaps an even greater collaboration with Kurosawa than Toshiro Mifun even though Mifun obviously gets more publicity because he's a kind of louder actor whereas like I said Shimura is just class um, and so he does lots of things that are just like so subtle um, Obviously things like, you know, the villain is definitely the villain. Bowler hat and big thick black moustache. Um, yeah, a really good little film. Is it Major Kurosawa? No, it's not Major Kurosawa. Um, but as a debut, it's a very nice little film. So thank you very much for joining me for part one of Kurosawa before Rashomon. Hopefully you'll join me for episode two. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Sanchez Sagata if you've watched it. And I would be even more interested to hear if you've seen the 1965 uh, remake. And we'll see you again. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying thanks for watching.